Make sure you watch to the end to see some images I captured after filming this video. Today, I'm going to show you how you can get better images and save a lot of money doing it with third party lenses. Today with me, I have my 24 to 70 f 2.8 and my Tamron 100 to 400 f 4.5 to 6.3 that I've just recently purchased in order to replace my Canon 24 to 70 f 2.8 L lens and also my Sigma 70 to 300 f 4 to 5.6 lens. So why am I replacing my lenses with these two? And more importantly, why am I replacing my Canon L lens with a third party lens. We're gonna go ahead and cover all that along with different specs and build quality and ran a few, few tests to compare image quality, autofocus and all that. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So first we'll go ahead and cover the 24 to 70. You're probably wondering why would I replace a Canon L lens with a third party lens? Well, if you're new to the channel, and or if you didn't watch video two weeks ago or video four weeks ago, I started having issues with the, the focus ring. Got kind of real loose. You really had to grab it and twist it fast to get the, the focus to move. And then also it would just jump from one extreme to the other. Couldn't fine tune it. But yeah, started having issues with the focus ring. And, and since I'm on the road, can't really sit around for two or three weeks waiting for somebody to send it off to Canon. They charged me three, $400 uh, to replace it. So it's went ahead and tore it apart. It was a really easy fix to get to the focus ring and fix it. Started working great. Either it was a coincidence that it happened or more than likely I did it. But I've read and heard that these uh, 24 to 70s first versions had a common issue of the aperture module going out. So when that goes out, the lens is stuck at f2.8. And other than that, it's fully functional. Just can't shoot anything other than 2.8. And being a landscape photographer, need those other apertures instead of spending the six, seven hundred dollars or so for a new used one and running the risk of having the same issue. I just went ahead and went the cheaper route and got the Tamron. So that's why I'm replacing this lens. Still a great lens, still love it, but got to be able to shoot other than 2.8. We'll go ahead real quick, go through the specs of these. Obviously, the Canon. 24 to 70 is a lot older than the Tamron. This was released in 2002 and then discontinued in 2012 when they came out with version two. Tamron came out in 2012, same time as I think just like a month before the version two of the Canon. Then it was discontinued in 2017 and replaced with the uh, G2 version. Brand new when they came out, the Canon brand new was $2,199, $2,200 and compared to the Tamron new when it came out was only 1300. Canon you can pick them up used for 5 to 800 dollars on eBay and the Tamron anywhere from 400 to 600 roughly. I picked this lens up for 450 bucks. So, got a really good deal on it. It was in great shape, almost like new when I got it. And then moving on to the weight and size of them. Canon's slightly taller, not much. The Tamron's bigger around it's got the 82 millimeter filter ring and then the canon 77 millimeter canon weighs in at 34.6 ounces and for those not inside the u.s or anybody doesn't use ounces or pounds it comes at 988 grams or 2.16 pounds the tamaron is 29.8 ounces or 845 grams or 1.85 pounds which is if you do a lot of hiking and backpacking, then every little ounce and every little pound helps. Tamron has vibration control or image stabilization, as Canon calls it. The Tamron has a focus lock or zoom lock. Pull in the 24 millimeter, you can lock it so I guess it doesn't creep. Build quality, obviously the Canon L lenses have always been built solid, hefty, just, just workhorses. Um, weather sealed. Uh, the Tamron's also weather sealed. 
no complaints with build quality there as far as i can tell right now feels very solid in the hands and just all around very well built one difference between the two on the tamaron zoom ring is in the front focus ring is in the back which i actually like because when you hold it you're holding a camera hold it, supporting the lens easily focus with just your thumb the focus ring and zoom lens super smooth very easy to turn so really love that so that pretty much just quickly covers uh the different specs weights build quality uh not too much like i said not too much difference from build quality both very solid so after that we go ahead and move into the different tests we did now when i did the test not super scientific um all the tests and all lenses were done with the my canon 5d mark iii all the same settings same focal lengths two second timer to minimize any type of camera shake also an autofocus so everything was done with the camera, so it was all the same. So everything the same, same camera, same settings. The autofocus speed. Canon's a little bit faster, but even the Tamron, still quick, still accurate. Not much difference there. So as far as 2470, don't do a really whole lot of fast moving subjects like wildlife or sports or anything like that. As far as that, autofocus speed's really not a big uh, deal breaker for me or big concern because uh, mainly use these for landscape but if that is a concern for you really can't go wrong with either one third party tamaron has great autofocus so following that we went ahead and did a stabilization uh test so when i did the test zoomed in both at uh 70 millimeter i did all the tests just aiming at a tree um that has because the bark has really sharp edges a lot of detail so zoomed in 70 millimeter just tapped into the lenses not much of a difference between the two. Even the Tamron with it turned off. So it had very little camera shake. Uh, when I went ahead and turned it on, really had to tap both lenses pretty hard to get to see any camera shake zoomed all the way in. So between the two, pretty much the same. Like I said, the Canon, even without IS, was very good at holding, minimizing uh the camera shake now the big difference that I was very surprised on was not expecting this at all i knew the tamron was going to have really nice image quality when i compared the two on a tripod zooming at 70 millimeter shooting the same tree settings all that everything was completely the same um took the image when i went into lightroom loaded them up and even that normal normal crop both great looking images both sharp but when I zoomed into 100% on both of them, completely caught off guard. I thought I did something wrong, so I took the Canon back out, reshot it, same result. The Tamron came out on top, very noticeably more sharp. I was totally blown away. The Tamron came out the same year as uh, version two of the Canon. Maybe a little bit more technology in the Tamron versus the Canon, but again, I was very blown away and was not expecting those results so right now haven't really used did a whole lot of shots with 24 to 70 just did a few test shots of that tree to compare them but like i said very surprised with it really looking forward to getting out to the field and doing some actual landscape photography with it and see how it really performs out in the real world the canon all cl lenses nothing to frown upon still great lens but as far as you can see on the quality test the tamron definitely outperformed with that we're going to go ahead and move on to the 7300 and the 100 to 400 also you can probably tell why i went ahead and <laughs> replacing the 7300 with the tamron 100 400 <clears throat> i've taken great images with this had a very long time about 10 or 11 years and some of my favorite images have been taken with this lens um been wanting to upgrade i was looking at the 70 to 200 mainly because I do landscape and didn't at the time wasn't really thinking about a whole lot of range. But a while back when I was in Gunnison National Forest, we ran into some elk and kind of got bit by the wildlife bug. So I decided I was gonna go ahead and just go up to the 100 to 400 so I have a little bit more reach, 200 mil more than the 70 to 200. And as far as the gap between the 70 and 100, don't really shoot that much between those ranges. And if I really need to, I got the 2470 and I can just crop in a little bit. 30 millimeter is not that big of a deal. That's why I went ahead and upgraded and switch, switching out the lenses. 
um, just a much more high quality lens than the 70 to 300. 70 to 300 was released in 2005. Don't really know when they discontinued it. The camera is 2012, still making it brand new. Prices when I bought this brand new, paid around $300. You can pick them up used now all day long on eBay for like 60 to 80 bucks. Um, really can't go wrong with it for that price. The uh, Tamron, brand new, right now $799 or $800 used. You can pick them up anywhere from $400 to $600 on eBay for really nice ones. I got really lucky, won this one on an auction on eBay. Ended up with after taxes for $378. And when I got this thing, didn't even look like it had ever even been attached to the camera. Moving into the weight, obviously the size difference, even with even with the lens hood on the 7300 between the two, still is not even as tall as the 100-400. So obviously there's a big weight difference. The 7300 comes in at a whopping 19.2 ounces or 545 grams or 1.2 pounds. <clears throat> now the 100-400, very hefty, weighing 41.8 ounces, 1,185 grams or 2.6 pounds. Looking at some of the features, the Sigma 70 to 300, not weather sealed, 100 to 400 weather sealed, no image stabilization, just like the 20, Tamron 24 to 70, the 100 400 has a VC, has two different modes. Didn't really see a difference between the two. Um, I'll kind of have to look up, see what the difference is. The filter sizes on these two, the Tamron 100 400 is a 67 millimeter filter, and the Sigma is a 58. Again, on the 100 400, the zoom is out front, focus range in the back. And especially with this long lens holding it like this, very easy, very easy to turn that with just your thumb to focus it. Very nice. Um, the Sigma zoom lens in the back, it's a little more, a little bit more tough, and the focus um, is very easy to turn, very loose. And moving on to the build quality, the Sigma 70 to 300 Aussie built a lot more cheaply than the 100 to 400. Like I mentioned in the video before, pretty much all plastic, <clears throat> except for the mounts, metal, and probably whatever is inside, but doesn't really take away from the quality of images you can get with it. Very light, as mentioned before, not weather sealed. Definitely not as durable as the other lenses, but being a $300 lens, it's stand up test of time. I've been out in rainy weather and everything with it, and still fully works. Tamron 100 to 400 on the other hand built feels like it's built like a tank very hefty very solid uh, no complaints there weather seal like I said all around built great um, also on the end here they got a rubber it's pretty much rubberized ring around around the edge I really like that kind of helps protect the focus or the filter ring threads I'm really liking that in case you bump it by accident It'll help protect those threads. Feels like it's built like tank, very well built. Feels great in the hands. It also has a lock for the zoom uh, when the zoom all the way back to 100. Now, moving on to the autofocus speed test. Obviously, the 100 to 400 is going to take that one. It's not going to be as fast as your, say, your Canon or depending on what brand you shoot, Nikon, Sony, all that. Your native lenses, high quality, are going to have a lot quicker focus, but the focus on this, um, accurate. When I was testing it, there wasn't really any focus hunt on it. Unlike the, the Sigma was just, it's slow and did a lot of focus hunting. Um, not the best for fast moving images or subjects like birds or anything like that. Can't get the job done. Just does a lot of hunting and not super fast. So obviously the, again, the Tamron takes that. Now, when it comes to vibration control or uh, camera shake, obviously the Sigma doesn't have any IS, so zoomed all the way into 300 millimeter, lot, lot of shake, just tapping it. It was all over the place, um, especially when you're out in the field, zoomed all the way in, and then you go 10 times to really zoom in to get uh, fine-tune the focus. 
it's very shaky, just barely touching it, trying to focus it. It's just all over the place. The Tamron 100 to 400, very good with the VC turned off tapping it. There is, there is decent amount of camera shake, but as soon as you flip the VC on, pretty much almost non-existent. You really had to tap the thing really good to start getting camera shake. The image stabilization on the Tamron is phenomenal. No complaints there. And like I said, all the tests on these were also done at um, same focal length since the Sigma can only go to 300 mil. We only did the test on the Tamron at 300 mil. So it was the most fair test uh, between the two as I could get. So just like the 24 to 70s, uh, use the same tree, image quality test on, GAN zoom it, 300 millimeter, 5D Mark III, autofocus, same settings. No surprise when I got them uploaded in the Lightroom right away, you can tell the difference. The 100 to 400 is obviously a lot more sharp and really at 100 millimeter or 100% cropped in, really can see the difference. So still not totally bashing on the 7300, a higher quality lens, um, you're going to have a lot better image quality and sharpness between the two. Now also since they're uh, telephoto lenses, wanted to go ahead and do a, a test of an object further away. So I picked a tree that was a lot further away, it was probably about 70, 80 yards away. Zoom that 300 mil, 100 to 400 was sharp, sharper than the 7300, but 7300 still held detail and sharpness. But when it came in, the cropping in at 100%, that's where you really saw it. Even at 100%, the 100 to 400 held a lot of detail, held a lot of sharpness. And I even cropped in at 200%. Obviously, just blew the Sigma out of the water, and there was still a lot of detail and sharpness, even zoomed in at 200%. So like I said in my video before, nobody's gonna zoom in on your photos at 100, 200%. Um, but just doing tests, gotta do it. Just check the sharpness and see how they hold up. So with all the tests, obviously 100 to 400 takes all, takes all the check marks. Uh, again, very happy with it so far. Real excited to shoot some wildlife with it, some birds. Can't wait to get out into the field with it and really start taking images. If you're on a budget, Third part of the lenses cannot go wrong with them. Uh, Tamron Sigma's great high quality built built lenses. And the biggest difference obviously is going to be your price. Picking them up for half the price you buy them used, you're cutting the cost by um, by two thirds. You're gonna pay a third of the price as you would a brand new uh, native lens. And even at brand new prices, still saving a lot of money and you're getting a lot of lens, a lot of quality. So I hope this helps you out some if you're looking into purchasing new lenses, gives you something to think about. Very happy with the purchase so far. And like I mentioned, was really blown away between the, the quality between the Tamron and the Canon 24 to 70. Could not believe that. Hopefully uh, next week's video will be filmed up in South Dakota. I'm going to two locations I, were, I was back in. 2020 was out on the road. The first location I'm going to, they either have one or two herds. I think it's one herd of buffalo. And the awesome part about that campground is a lot of times in the morning or in the evening, the herd will just roll right through the middle of the camp. When I was up there in 2020, I was only there overnight. Um, so I didn't really get any images of them. Saw them way off in the distance. But this time I plan on staying at least two, three, maybe four or five days, who knows? So really looking forward to getting to use the 100 or 400 and photograph some buffalo in the wild. Really looking forward to it. Also, next location, gorgeous location. Um, when I was back in 2020, close to the Badlands and where I took this image and then also this image I showed you uh, in the video two weeks ago of the mountain sheep. Um, they also got, I'll see the big horn sheep, rams. So really look forward to going back there. Just a gorgeous area. And hopefully I can photograph some more mountain sheep and the awesome landscapes there. It's just a gorgeous landscape. Hopefully that happens. Hopefully the next week's video is up in those two locations. And again, with all that being said, go ahead and check out third-party lenses. Can't go wrong with them. 
And until next time, thanks for watching and we'll see you at the top.